All right, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm super excited. It's day one at Big Data London, and look who I have with me, Casey, founder of Prometheum. Super excited to be chatting with you. Today. Hey, super excited. I've uh, been following you, big fan, and so really happy that we finally got to connect here. Uh, here. So thank you for having me on your show. 100%. Uh, it was long due for sure, uh, Casey, because I know we chatted like uh, maybe a few years back. Yeah. Uh, and you were kind of starting to build Prometheum, and today it's a huge brand in the data fabric. So super thank excited you. about that. And finally, we are chatting. There's so much that's happening at Prometheum. So wanting to learn a little about that, just for, but just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us more about what... Prometheum does, yeah. and um, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get into the conversation. Yeah, super. Yeah, so uh, I'm the founder of Prometheum. Started about six years ago, yeah. um, and really with the goal in mind that the experience for people to use data and build data products should actually be a pleasant one. Yes. Um, yes. We've seen a lot of people with a lot of complexity, a lot of pain, having to throw a lot of people and money. Yeah. And I just feel like that's kind of like having a big ATM surcharge every single time you want to take <laughs> out your money, right? So really wanted the goal of how can we make it easier so that every employee at every company can answer their questions, right? Mm. Without having to wait months or it costs a lot of money. So that's what we embarked on this journey of building a data fabric. And if you think about a fabric, a fabric is supposed to be flexible and agile, right? Not these big concrete steel pipelines. And so that's really the idea is how do you simplify how do you accelerate? Right. And again, make it so it's actually a fun experience, right? That's really it, and that's where we really kind of gravitated toward natural language. Uh, before Gen AI was cool, but thank you, Gen AI, for making it even cooler now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so that's what we're up to at Prometheum, really empowering this self-service experience to a whole new level. That's awesome, and I know for a fact where you know you've been also serving a lot of. Uh, enterprises, big size enterprises. I'm kind of also wanting to learn a little about the challenges and how are you kind of solving those kind of things because when you talk, when we talk about enterprise, even, even I talk about enterprise leaders, they yeah. have like certain challenges which only a typical size of company can do it. Yeah. But you have been working with so many enterprises out there. So right. I'm kind of curious to learn a little about the challenges that they have had had and how are you kind of solving those? Yeah, no, I think when you think about enterprises, you usually think about complexity. Yes. Uh, they have every data product, every data platform under yeah. the sun times two, <laughs> right? Um, you, th you think about um, also just the difficulty in orchestration, all right. the different tools, all the different people, right? And then when you think about enterprises, time matters, efficiency mm. matters, right? This is what we're starting to see where the bigger you are, the longer you wait, there's actually a bigger cost. Right. And so we're actually seeing enterprises now realizing that and saying, it's not okay for me to ask my customers to wait three months for me to get them their data. Mm. And we're also seeing that there's a scale issue. I know that's ironic, because you think enterprise, you think big, but you can't keep hiring data engineers and PhDs exactly. in data, right? So the number of data people are going to tap out, but the number of business people are going to keep growing. So that demand pipeline is going to be a lot higher. True. And so more and more, the problem is not, let's wait and centralize on a few people. The problem has to be, how do I democratize right. and empower the people who actually want to know what the data can do? Yeah. And, and that's where I think we focus at Prometheum and what we're seeing, a lot of enterprises are now saying the same thing. Right? We now see data experience teams at enterprises, yes. and they're saying, my job is not to build a whole huge team of data engineers where we do this manually. Yeah. My job is how do I empower people, the business people, to do yeah. this themselves? And that's where a self-service platform, right, like Prometheum, to automate the creation of data products, really resonates those enterprises. Right? So imagine I don't have to file a ticket for you and go back and forth for three weeks. Imagine I just type in a question and in less than a minute, I get the answer and I have every detail that my data team needs. This right. is how we found the data, this is how we built it. So if you want to make a change, it's easy. You don't have to wait and figure out why I did what I did, right? Yeah. So that transparency, that explainability of the AI, I mean, that's one of the things that's slowing down AI adoption. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that the first thing we built is we want to tell people not only did we do it, but it's not a black box. Here's why and here's how. Yes. Yeah. No, 100%. This is something which is a 
a big problem when it comes to enterprises and they want to make sure that there's transparency. Everyone can talk about scalability or uh, yeah. this, like it is a problem which is definitely a problem we all know. Right. But how do you solve it is like a very key thing which Prometheum does it pretty well. So thanks for sharing that. Also, just on the topic, I know you mentioned yeah. about Gen AI kind of coming into the game, which was obviously a big uh, thing for Prometheum as well. Right. I'm kind of curious to learn, like, in the year 2024, this was the year of implementation uh, for AI. A yeah. lot of enterprise leaders that I spoke to, they were like, this is the year of implementation. Yeah. Uh, I know we're still getting there. It's right. almost more than the year has been already <laughs> Year's gone. almost over, yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious to learn about how is Prometheum uh, helping with the AI adoption as well. Yeah. Uh, how are you all helping the enterprise leaders to get to the next level when they're kind of also thinking about Gen AI? Yeah, good question because you're right. Uh, Gen AI is a hot topic. Every right? data leader has it on their agenda, their MBO, they got to do it. Yeah. But I think 2024 is the year that they start realizing getting hit with the adoption challenges, yeah. right? So um, there's a couple adoption challenges. One is security and mm -hmm. governance, right? Your business, your C chief of governance does not want you to send all your data to your LLM, right? So you got to figure out how am I going to do that? Um, and then two is accuracy and relevancy. How do I know what you generated for me is actually right? Uh, that's a challenge, because Gen AI is really good at giving you something fast. It may not be right. Right. And the third is the data integration challenges. So if you think about the, you know, every enterprise today, the way that they built their data sets, their dashboards, their queries, it goes through a complex series of steps. Catalogs, ETL tools, prep tools, data warehouse, data lakes, et cetera. Gen AI is not going to know how to work with 16 different exactly. vendors, right? Cool. And so cool. this is where people are going, oh, it's not as simple as plugging into my data warehouse. And then, oh, by the way, every database and data lake in their warehouse has their own LLM now. So exactly. Yeah. Instead of data sprawl, you now have LLM sprawl. And so <laughs> which one do you trust? So, you know, these are the things that data leaders are being hit in 2024. So enter Prometheum, where we come in and say, well, hey, check it out. Number one, we're never going to move data right. to your LLM. Yeah. Security and governance solve. Number two, as I was talking about, when you ask a question, we give you an answer. We will tell you what data came from. Which database, which okay. schema, which warehouse, which tables, which columns. Why do we pick those columns? Why do we apply those filters? Why do we write the SQL this way? Based upon your own usage and your own catalog. So That's most nice. enterprises already yeah. have this governance in place. So we're going to take your governance, your crowdsourcing, your query statistics, and we're going to show you this is why we picked this one over the other one. Okay and then give you full transparency so you could change on the fly if you don't agree. Because you can see the results, like, oh, I kind of don't agree, let me change that, boom, see it on the fly. So this is what's going about the transparency and the explainability, yeah. right, super important. And then the third is, on the data integration challenge, well, remember, your LLM can't talk to all those different data management tools. But a data fabric gives you a virtual layer across all of that. Hmm. So now, it, you have one API for the LLM to talk to. Right. One API that coordinates everything you have from a discovery, governance, prep, et cetera. Now it is possible for the LLM to get access to all your enterprise knowledge without sacrificing security. And that's where we've seen customers really be able to accelerate their right. gen adoption, right? Uh, I was just on stage with the, um, the data leader for National Grid, right? The number one utilities company, right, yeah. in the UK. They decided to go data fabric with Prometheum, right, for that reason. Uh, Gartner has actually said, the only way to do Gen AI properly is with something like a data fabric, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is where I think it's been really exciting to see that architecture really pay off. And I know, uh, since you're on this topic, I know Gartner also mentioned you all as the cool vendor. In this we won game. the award. It's not yeah. just a mention. We won the award. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, it's so, first of all, congrats on that. Thank you. It's a Thank huge you. thing man, when yeah. it comes from Gartner. I'm a Gartner ambassador myself. Yeah, so I yeah. know how, how much it is. It's a lot of work. It's <laughs> a lot of work to even get there. Yeah. So We're the only data fabric. Ex oh, wow. The only, only data, data fabric, fabric that has won the cool vendor. So wow. I, think that, I think that's very that's important. That's a huge thing. I yeah. think it's a huge statement, yes. Love it, and yeah. um, uh, these are fantastic insights, uh, Casey. One last question I have for you is, 
how do you see the future of data fabric? I know there's a lot that's going on in the space right now already, which needs to be explored, which needs to be done. Yep. So enterprise leaders are learning, some have learned it so well that they know that data fabric is the game we want to yeah. choose. But what's happening next? What's the future? Yeah, I think so. I think when something is hot in the beginning, uh, a lot of people jump in. Yeah. Uh, even if they don't have the data, they'll say they do, right? It's always yeah. always common. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see that shake out, right? Um, and yes. I think we'll so we'll know like what's real, what's marketing. Number one. Number two. I think you're going to see different data fabrics emerge for different specific use cases, right? Like I think. Uh, Microsoft Fabric is a great example, right? I think if, if you want to centralize your storage and compute and unify it across all your Microsoft, I think Microsoft Fabric is fantastic, right? But not everyone can move all their data into That's Azure. You know, not everyone yeah. can convert everything into Parquet, right? So this is where like you got to figure out what's right for you. And yeah. I think you know, companies like Prometheum, we're going to focus on a data product building experience. That's mm -hmm. going to be our bread and butter. Like we're yeah. going to make it so much faster, so much easier. Great experience to build data products, right? Other people might focus on governance. Other people might focus specifically on the integration, right? Yeah. But I think the, you know the the future of the fabric, I'm, in my opinion, is the future of fabric has to be mesh and fabric together. Wow. Because a mesh by itself is just a governing model. Yeah. It's nothing if you don't have good data underneath. True. A fabric by itself gives you the disturbability and the good data integration, but it's nothing if you can't actually build data products that people can consume. So really, I think the two complement each other. You can't build a good mesh without a good fabric. You can't build a useful fabric without a good mesh. So this is where I think the future is going. Uh, yeah. And if you look at the latest Gartner uh, hype cycle, it basically says that. Like the mesh has been deemed as obsolete, not that it's not useful, but it's not useful if you don't have the fabric. fabric. So the fabric has moved through the hype cycle, and more and more people, right, and this is where the data leader at National Grid is saying, right, they wanted the mesh concept, but they had no way to do it without a fabric. When they saw Prometheum, they go, oh my god, yeah. I have the fabric and I can build, so now I instantly get the mesh. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, this is fantastic information that you're sharing, uh, Casey, so thanks for that. Uh, and very valuable for our audience, so thanks for doing that. And, you bet. Uh, one last question that I have for you, and promise this is the last one. <laughs> if folks want to reach out to you, yes. where can they do it? Where can they learn more about Prometheum? I know you all... Always Look at that, people are clapping for me already. Good content. <laughs> You're always, you know, obviously, I'm seeing the yeah. booth so busy. Yeah. Uh, people are so interested to learn more about it. So, yeah. where can they do that? Absolutely. Um, they could come to our website, yeah. uh, prometheum.ai. Okay. Really easy, our company name, .ai, right? Yeah. Um, or have a YouTube channel as well. People nice. can check out prometheum.ai. Uh, and then people can also uh, reach out to me, right? Casey at Prometheum.ai, yeah, it's super and easy. And LinkedIn as well. And LinkedIn as yes. well. Yeah. All right, this all is right. great, uh, Casey. Thanks for sharing all the details. Yeah. It is such a pleasure to have you debut on The Rabbit Show. And Likewise. I'm pretty sure this is uh, first of many. And we'll have, uh, you know, keep the conversation going. Yep. Uh, great work that you all are doing in the fabric space. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for having, having me. Super excited to be on The Rabbit Show. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, yeah. Casey. All right.